what made you want to come back? Uh, I think you take a look at, um, for me, just taking a look at all the pieces here, a lot of talent, um, being in the locker room, seeing the personalities, uh, the players there, building a relationship, um, not only with the players, but with the staff. Um, being in the city, just in the stadium, just the environment, how it's competitive. Um, everybody's just focused in, and wanting to win and the passion that not only the players share, but the staff and the city um, is something I want to continue to be a part of. Continuity between you and Jonathan Gannon will help you personally, and also I guess the, the defense in front of you. I think my approach has always just been, you know, trying to prepare the best that I can um, and being ready to adapt. So obviously, you know, another year, um, us working together, that familiarity, just learning one another, um, continue to build on expectations, continue to um, work on you know how we can improve each day, um, and then with the rest of the group, just learning from the rest of the guys in the room at the other positions, learning from the other coaches, and just continuing to take in um, the culture, having a second year there and knowing a little bit more what to expect. I'm excited for it. Um, well, I think um, our preparation has always been, you know, preparing the next guy to come in and play. So um, not just looking at, you know, where we are right now, but just thinking back in the past, um, you know, having veteran guys in the room, but always challenging guys. Um, to be prepared, working on their craft, never knowing when they might need to step in. Um, had some guys step in last year and play some time. So now it's just, you know, continuing to um, preach that message and having guys continue to be dialed in and understand it's a great opportunity. Um, you know, an opportunity at which a lot of guys really, really thrive for and really want. Um, part of the dream of, you know, being in the NFL, being a young guy um, and having a team to rely on you and you going out and making plays. So. Um, I think people understand that and people are working towards it every day. When there are competitions like that for spots that are open, how uh, how much do you pay attention to it as a veteran with the somewhat solidified place? Do you really keep an eye on, on who's kind of edging the other ones out? From my experience um, and my journey of being an undrafted guy to you know sitting here where I'm at now, um, I've just been trying to help guys grow um, and help guys continue to develop on and off the field and trying to be a mentor when I can um, and paying it back. Um, that's kind of been my experience. I've had veteran players, some at my same position, some in other rooms, um, preaching each day of what the mindset of competing and what that looks like and not being satisfied with, you know, just doing your job, but doing your job and then executing and finishing, whether that's with the pass breakup and then just always looking to get better and take that next step from a, a pass deflection to now an interception. So, um, that's something that I share each day with those guys is just competing and and even guys that who may be behind me and feeling like I have a solidified spot saying, you know, come get me. Um, and me just putting that pressure on myself to, you know, never be satisfied, to always continue to push the bar, um, not only for myself, but for everybody around me. The team made a lot of changes in the front seven. How do you feel like it's going to be able to help impact your play on the field? I think, um, you know, there's a large impact of the game, it's one up, up front, offensively and defensively. So anytime you can continue to add a lot of talent, add a lot of depth, um, add experience, being able to keep guys fresh, um, that allows people to continue to, you know, people give their max effort each play, but um, being able to keep guys fresh and have that relentless um, mentality and that relentless pressure is something that definitely helps out on the back end. Um, rush and cover goes hand to hand. So, just as much as we got to give them time to, you know, get to the quarterback, um, you know, they also apply pressure and cover up. You know how much we have to cover as well. So, it's a relationship that goes hand to hand. How much of that sentiment you were talking about mentoring young players? How much did that come from, whether it's Harrison in Minnesota or, you know, Rodney from your days in Virginia and getting back together last year? I think that's just been my personality, um, even outside of football, is just, you know, being the best that I can be, but always, you know, trying to lend a helping hand. So that's something that I've carried um, and things that I've experienced throughout my career. So, um, you know, guys like Harrison Smith, you know, um, giving information here and there. Other guys like Linville Joseph, who had won a Super Bowl, played defensive line, just pumping that, you know, hunger mentality. And um, for me, it's just about, not being worried about the next guy, but just trying to be the best individual player you can be and knowing that that's enough. Um, and understanding you know, the, the nature of the beast. Um, 
over time, as player get, gets better, um, and you know the experience catches up. So it's really just focus on the moment, not really worrying about any of the outside stuff. Just enjoying playing the game, continue to focus on um, getting better each day, and just enjoying the experience. Slay mentioned Marcus Epps as someone to pay attention to. If he is the guy who starts next to you, what about him thinks? Uh, I'm sorry. What do you think? I'm sorry. Why do you think he's ready for that spot? I've spent some time with him in Minnesota, um, and from then to now, he's he's remained the same player. Um, young, has a lot of ability, um, always focused, always paying attention to what the coach is saying. Um, regardless of how much he's playing, he's always up on the game plan. He's always knowing the assignments. And then just watching him work, um, being very detailed in what he's doing, and just being hungry for the opportunity. I think, you know, you take a look at all those things, and. Um, you just say that this is a guy who has a chance because he's really focused on the opportunity. And if one comes, um, he's preparing himself to be ready for it. He was effective in somewhat limited role last year. How do you know if he's ready to do that in a bigger role? I mean, some people want to look for a sample size. Um, I think you just look at the player, the ability and what he's done with the opportunity that he's given. And, you know, nobody, nobody can predict the future, but you know, he's doing, he's doing all the right things to give himself the best chance to be just as successful as anybody else. So I think you take a look at that and you continue to give players more opportunities um, to continue to do and succeed with what they're given as well. It's our first time speaking to you since went to the dance in uh, Texas. What did you take from that experience? Um, just being able to step away from the game, um, being able to take off the helmet, uh, being able to continue to utilize my platform in a positive way um, and maximize it while it's as, affluent, as influential as it is. So um, I don't have any kids, but being there, just seeing the other fathers with the daughters, taking in, seeing that relationship, uh, seeing that light in a lot of young, young uh, ladies' eyes there, and then understanding um, who I'm there with and what they're experiencing, and just trying to be able to ease um, a little bit of what you know the young lady was going through at the time. So just being very grateful for the opportunity to, to be there and um, for them to even ask was, was an honor to do. So the experience was great and one that I'll um, carry with me for the rest of my life.